Welcome to Review Every Ship by CitizenCon 2024. The point is to give an update on every ship since some haven't had a video made about them in years. And others, the information is simply too spread out to be helpful in making decisions. When we do a concept ship that isn't in game, we'll theory craft about what we think the final product will be using educated guesses and the information available at the time of the review. We'll go in depth, but we won't repeat everything on the RSI website. We will link to sources and fix any errors either in the description or in the comments. And remember, Digital ships aren't imaginary, digital ships are imaginecessary. Before we start, I am giving away an account with an Avenger Titan with a Stella Fortuna weapon. I am also giving away a 400 eye skin and a 600 eye skin for a total of not one, not two, but three prizes. To enter the contest, make sure you're subscribed to Billionaire Ninjas, leave a comment on at least one video and like or dislike this video. When you win, I will verify you through social media. So go and follow the Billionaire Ninjas page at Ninjas Leap on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. The three winners for each contest will be announced at the end of March 2024 on video and we'll have two weeks to claim their prize the first person to verify gets to choose the best prize so although you have two weeks you'll want to reach out as fast as possible so make sure you're watching every video as soon as possible to be the first to grab the grand prize now back to our regularly scheduled programming as this ship is still in concept but is currently being built be aware that all things we say here are subject to change we are returning to the crusader manufacturer for our comeback it's the Crusader Genesis Starliner, and it will most likely have five variants. For the price, the Starliner, as of 3.22.1, is $400 standalone, $400 warbond, and was the same at concept. In-game cost and rental cost are unknown. This ship is available only during time-limited sales. The ship is not currently in-game, and for loaner ships, you get a Hercules C2 as of March 20th, 2024. The Genesis is yet another landmark in Crusader Industries' proud history of transport designs. This ship utilizes award-winning manufacturing techniques and the highest quality parts to create one thing, a next-generation passenger ship, at a price that won't break your budget. Crusader Industries' proprietary Neo-G engine technology offers some of the most efficient flight for a ship of its size. The modular passenger transport ship you forgot about! Cheers. Oh, cheers. Mmm. Oh, that's good. I just, I keep having this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> For measurements, the Starliner has a length of 85 meters, Beam of 90, height of 16, and it's a large ship. Its minimum crew is two and its maximum crew is eight. It can carry 300 SCU. The Starliner SCM speed is unknown and we don't know the afterburner speed. My guess is it will be fast because they state in the Q&A it's designed for speed, efficiency, and modularity. I'm thinking it will be above average speed for its class and at the very least, we know it will be faster than the 890 from the Q&A. For weapons, the Starliner has a size five weapon mount with a size four dual turret equipped. For ship parts, the Starliner has one medium radar, two medium computers, one large power plant with one medium power plant, two large coolers, one large shield generator, four medium fuel intakes, one large fuel tank, one large quantum drive, one large jump module, and one large quantum fuel tank. However, these are all going to change because CIG confirmed that this ship does not fit the current ship metrics. The Q&A talks a lot about redundant systems. So my guess is each of the single parts will get a second part, a second medium radar, a second shield generator, and perhaps multiple fuel tanks. The hull HP for the Starliner is unknown, but it doesn't have a lot of guns. So my guess is it will be pretty hefty, but not quite military level. It makes sense for the hull HP of the Starliner to fall somewhere between the Reclaimer at 89,002 HP and the 890 Jump at 153,200. I can't imagine a lot of people being willing to get on a ship that can't take a few hits. At least one variant will have armor though. A quick note, hull HP will go away, but that doesn't mean those numbers are meaningless. Hull HP is a rough estimate of where ships should sit as far as durability. It's not a random number that they assigned as a placeholder. A lot of work went into coming up with those numbers. And I think this particular ship is going to be pretty hefty considering its size and its role. The shields on the Starliner are also unknown, but expect civilian grade A shields. I'm guessing quadrant shields with somewhere between 200,000 HP and 300,000 HP. 
The Q&A revealed it relies heavily on its shields and power plants rather than its weapons, so it makes sense that it would have top-of-the-line civilian shields. For quantum stats, the Starliner stats are also unknown, but considering its role, I would guess it goes pretty far. I'm guessing one jump point or to one end of the system and back without having to refuel, with slightly above average speed, depending on the variant you get. Mind you, the variants are not technically announced yet to be able to purchase. The claim time for the Starliner is also unknown. Before a large ship, I would expect about 30 minutes regular claim, 10 minutes expedited claim, and about 40K for the expedited claim fee. For special features and amenities, this ship is an incredibly modular ship, rivaled only by the Drake Caterpillar and the Misk Endeavor. It has very fuel efficient engines, which makes sense as it's primarily a means of transport from point A to point B. The mid-range model is the model that comes standard, which balances luxury features like lounges and personal quarters with passenger capacity. The essentials model has none of those things and focuses more on carrying cargo and it does carry passengers, but in a very minimalistic way. And the luxury model carries way less people and is more like an 890 jump yacht, but less hotel vibes and more like a private jet. There will also be a model that has minor repair facilities for small vessels, at least the size of the M50. There will also be a troop transport version, a hunter killer version, and command and control version that is unique to the UEE military. So I don't know if we'll be able to get our hands on all of those. This ship also has VTOL fans and is said to perform equally well in atmosphere as it does in space. There will also be a prison variant of this ship. So there are five announced variants at least. We just don't know how many of those will be available to purchase when the ship becomes flyable versus others that we will see in the verse and maybe we can't purchase them, but we just see them in the game. Now it's time to rate this ship. A rating I rate from one to 10. My one is only buy if you have a unique reason that is specific to you or because you like the looks of the ship. My 10 is basically if you have the money, this ship is almost guaranteed to be useful to you in the game. A one doesn't mean the ship is useless or ugly, and a 10 doesn't mean that the ship is perfect. Just remember, this is just our rating. Please give us yours in the comments down below. Or you can say them into a bottle and bury them. Then in a thousand years, someone will dig it up and hear everything you said with no context. Amazing. You can have that idea for free. My rating for this ship overall is an eight. Let's start with what I like about the ship. It is one of the most modular ships in the game and looks like it has a lot of capability to be more than just a commuter ship. I like that it's not trying to be a combat ship though. This already has a ton of things it can do and it needs to fit a role, not be a do everything ship. I like the way that the ship looks. It gets its design cues from the Banu Merchantman, if you didn't notice already, because the same art designer worked on both of those ships. Albeit it's nowhere near as big as the Banu Merchantman, at least not yet. It's also flyable with just one person, even though that won't be the most efficient use of the ship. It also does what makes sense. It's a transport ship, but it does every type of transport that makes sense. It can carry people, can carry cargo, can act as a bit of a flying hotel, but less so than the 890, and it can also load up vehicles and small ships. I feel like this and the Caterpillar will have some big fights over which roles they will fill when they each get their modularity. Now what the issues are. It doesn't seem like this ship will be as fast as it needs to be and it doesn't list any point defense turrets. They also haven't really announced what the availability of the modules will look like and haven't provided any updates on people transport gameplay in years. The weapons are deterrents, not really meant for a fight, so it would make sense for it to not have a lot of those, but the speed should be better. I think transport ships will need to get people to their destination fast as well as be able to flee from combat so it should be in the top five of large non-combat spaceships so what would i fix with this ship i would make sure the top speed rivals the carrick make sure the shields rival the 890 jump and give it a few point defense turrets like the merchantman has and give this ship the variants it deserves so we can purchase them also can we get an update on this ship please cig i get it you have 200 ships, but I feel like at least every three years, we should get an update on each ship and where it's at. The roadmap is not quite doing that. So if we could just get like a three year update, that would be great. Yeah. So who is this ship for? It's for people who know they'll need to transport people. However, 
it's even more so for people who need to transport at least one other thing as well, like cargo or vehicles. If you only need to carry a vehicle or multiple vehicles, get a C2. If you only need to carry people, get an E1 Spirit. If you only need to carry cargo, get a whole C. But for people who might need to do all of the above, the Genesis seems to be the jack of all trades, master of none you're looking for. So why is it an eight? Well, multi-role ships always score high on my scale because they appeal to more people, they are more useful to more people than single focus ships, and they justify their value a lot better than single use ships. For $400, the Starliner is priced at the exact amount the ship is worth. I wouldn't really pay more for it than that, but if you play the CCU game, you'll be able to get it cheaper, and that is a deal. This ship gets an eight because its utility allows me to be a bit indecisive. Its price allows me to feel like I got what I paid for, and it looks like the Merchantman, and that's a beautiful ship. I truly believe modular ships will be kings of the game when it releases. I imagine using this ship as a people transporter for my base building operations when I'm finally ready to open them up. It will carry all their luggage, but also allow me to restock the base and bring some utility vehicles for them to use. I also intend to use this to get my org mates from planet to planet so we aren't all wasting fuel getting from point A to point B. I know you're here for our rating, but if you really want a ship, go buy it. We won't stop you. Or even better, all ships can be earned in game once the game releases, and some you can purchase in game right now. These are just our ratings, but when you spend, it's your money. My opinion, if you know what type of cargo ship you want and you only have a specific need, there may be other ships you'll find that are better. But if you know you'll need to transport some people and maybe a little of something else, this is the ship for you. And it's also the ship for me. This one is in the fleet. And if they give us some proper variants, it may not end up being the only one. All right, that is it for this one. Thanks for spending your time with us. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.